is far greater than anything you've ever tried to imagine in your mind. The mind cannot comprehend it. Cannot, cannot begin. It's like casting a, a drop off your fingertip in the ocean. It doesn't do justice. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a man like you've never read about. This is why we got so angry. And when, when, when they wrote these cartoons about him in, in Denmark, maybe a lot of us overreacted. Yes, we overreacted. But if someone insulted your mother, most of us probably would overreact just because we love them so much. We love him so much. Because he gave us this pure religion, this great way of life that has changed me from being somebody that nobody wanted to be around to somebody who now wants to be around everyone because I want them to know where I've been and what I've come through. And even though my grandmother passed away in 2002 and my parents are not Muslim yet, I'm working on them. They are very staunch, they are very strict Christians still. But they love me to death and they love the fact that I'm Muslim. They will stand up and say in a group of their own congregation that I'm glad my son as a Muslim wouldn't want him any other way. Because before, he did not have any respect for me. Even as a Christian, no respect for me. Now as a Muslim, he calls me every day. When I'm sick, he drops everything to come see me across the country. Why? Because his religion tells him he has to. This is a way of life people need. And I'm going to finish. <clears throat> Forgive me for not being able to compose myself. I'm going to finish with a statement of Bernard Shaw, who many of you may have read his works. He said about Muhammad in Islam, peace be upon him, that if a man like Muhammad were to assume leadership of the world today, he would solve every single problem. He would solve every single one of his problems during his afternoon, cu afternoon cup of tea. This was this man. And this was the religion he founded. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. A man, it was just there, wrote a book called The Ranking 100. The most hundred influential people in history. I don't remember his name. It's one of those things that I've known it forever. Michael Hart. Michael Hart. He chose, he's a Christian. He chose Muhammad as number one. He said, because if you want to know what it means to have smallness of means but greatness of purpose, then go look at Muhammad. And go look at the religion he founded. You find it there. So that's what I'm conveying to you. I'm conveying to you the statements of your colleagues, non-Muslims. Just go do the research for yourself. Like, like Napoleon said, Muta, what can it hurt you? What can it hurt you? It can either be an interesting study that may lead you to understand 10 million people in this country a lot better and 2 billion people in the world a lot better and growing. Statistically, by the year 2015, Muslims will be a majority in the world. Statistically, we will be. So, I mean, it's just going to happen. So you will know them a lot better. Or you may find the truth. And what an amazing, amazing find that would be for such a little sacrifice is opening a book, picking up some papers, meeting a couple people. I thank you for your time and, and, and hope that I have been of benefit. I finish by saying that there is no God worthy of worship except the one true God that created everything. His name is Allah in Arabic, which means the God. And that Muhammad is the last and final messenger of mankind. And that Islam is the truth. Thank you very much.